In this video, I'm going to talk about all the things that I absolutely hate about living in the city of Mobile. Now, even though those things are bad, I can share with you that there is a resolution to almost every one of those items. We're hanging out at the house today, going into the studio, so come on and let's get it started. Hey, my name is Jeff Jones with Keller Williams right here in the city of Mobile. Now, I've lived here in Mobile my entire life. And, uh, you know, one of the things I like doing are answering questions when folks reach out to me. And in particular, this list of items that I hate about Mobile, well, I'm going to share with you what I hate, but I'm also going to give you the answers to why, honestly, they're not so bad. And the first one, well, it's the one I get asked about the most. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's get started on this list of the things that I hate about living in Mobile. Now, granted, actually that list is pretty short. I've lived here my whole life and, well, I just don't hate a lot of things about it. But if we're honest, uh, and I'm compiling this list based on all the folks that have commented on social media lately when I asked that question. And the first one, well, it's a big concern for people who are moving here from out of town and well, that has to do with crime. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple things. First, I'm going to share with you my experience personally. Um, and then, of course, well, the reputation. So if you search online anything about Mobile and crime, you're going to see that, well, the city of Mobile has been featured on the uh, show called First 48 on the A&E Network. And so <laughs> that's not something to brag about. But if you uh, get bored and you want to look it up, you can go and find out some things about Mobile. But me personally... I have never had an issue with robbery, with assault, with any type of violent crime on myself personally. Now, I'll tell you where I've lived just to give you an idea. I've always lived kind of out in West Mobile. So as a kid growing up, I lived in a neighborhood called Park Plaza off of Ziegler Boulevard. Uh, they're doing a lot of construction out there now, but it's over by the Greater Gulf State Fair. So I lived there for about 14 years. And I never had any problem. Now, again, that is me personally. Then we moved uh, over to an area off of Airport Boulevard across from Providence Hospital. Lived there for a couple years. Never had a problem there. Then I moved out um, Pinehurst area. Yeah, yeah, I lived in Pinehurst. No problem there. Lived there for about a year, then moved over to Knollwood Apartments. Of course, I was in college, single. Again, it was about 25 years ago, but no problems there. Then I lived out in Westmobile, uh, an area called Smoke Rise. I lived there for about a year and a half, uh, no problems. Then we moved to even further out West Mobile, um, a neighborhood over by McFarland, Johnson Road. Lived there for about eight years. No problems there. Then I moved to Cottage Hill um, near what Cottage Hill and McFarland again. Lived there for about eight years also. No problems. Uh, and then, of course, now I live in the city of Mobile. So city of Mobile, it's been great. I love it here. Um, and um, it's just been no problems. So what you really have to do is you have to ask yourself, um, how does Mobile compare with any other city around the country? I think every city uh, has certain crime concerns, but what really boils down to is the support of the mayor. It has to do with the support of the police chief and um, just the community in general. So overall, I love it here, and I've never personally had an issue with crime, but you'd have to do your own research, and there's some websites you can go to. There's one called spotcrime.com. It's a great resource, and when people ask me that question, I always refer them to these other resources so they can do their own research and find out, hey, this house I'm looking at, what's it like? What's the area like? Type in that address, and it will give you a live update on police reporting that has happened in that area recently. So there you go. When it has to do with crime, it's one of the things that I uh, get the most complaints from when people do research, but that's been my personal experience. Now, another thing uh, has to do with things I do not like, and that is the weather. So right now, the weather's great. It's around 73 degrees, the month of October. Uh, I walked outside, there was zero sweating. However, about a month ago, it was like a sauna outside, and in this in Mobile, uh, we have really hot summers. So anywhere from around April to around September, it just starts to pick up. The heat, the humidity. Um, when I walk outside in the middle of the summer, I feel like I just wrapped an electric blanket around me. I mean, it is absolutely crazy, the humidity. And it's not that dry heat like out in Phoenix, Arizona. It is true. Uh, it is really humid. Now, um, in the winter, 
It's very mild. You know, it's it probably gets to be maybe a low of around 20, just a couple of times a year. We go out and drip our faucets. I get that phone call from my dad. He's like, son, don't forget, go out and drip your faucet. So I'll do that just a couple times a year. But otherwise, it's very mild. It never snows, maybe once every five or six years. And like I've talked about before, they go out, you know, the kids go out and play, the school shut down. It's like everything comes to, you know, a screeching halt because people around here, they don't know how to drive in the snow or the ice or the sleet, which it, it sleets more uh, than snow, actually. So anyway, it's very mild, but it's very hot in the summer. You have to have an HVAC in your house. Uh, you absolutely have to. And in your car, also, you have to have an air conditioner that works. If you don't, you're going to be miserable. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing that I do not like about this area is we don't have these big, you know, pro sports teams like, you know, New Orleans has the Saints. Um, you know, Atlanta Braves has, well, uh, the Atlanta Braves, the Falcons. You've got all these places in Atlanta, but not here in Mobile. Now, what we do have is we do have the ability to hop in the car and drive two hours to New Orleans, you know, four and a half, five hours to Atlanta. Uh, but we are coming in hot with uh, college sports now because the South Alabama Jags just built a brand new stadium. Um, the Whitney Bank, I think that's the name of it. It's got a capacity of around 25,000 people. And the community, well, they're really starting to catch on board. They're starting to get excited and go to it. So if you like college football, I would say that being in Mobile, you're going to have that opportunity. Um, we used to have the Bay Bears uh, baseball. I don't know if it was double A, triple A. I'm not sure. Well, but they're gone now. But I will tell you, with all the exciting things happening in Mobile, things are on the rise. But that's another thing. We don't have these big pro sports teams. We do have a strong community league. Um, all these student you know, teams, those are growing. In fact, there's a lot that's being done um, with, uh, with sowing this money into the community, with building new sports complexes. So that is on the rise. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing is that we have one of the largest school systems. Um, I mean, it is like massive. In fact, it's the largest school system in the whole state of Alabama. It has over 50,000 students. And so think about that. That's pretty massive. And they're in over 90 schools. So you hear about the school system in a little town just north of Mobile called Saraland. They're an independent school system. And because they're independent, well, they can be more focused. Whereas Mobile County, it's massive. And so with that, it's kind of like a train. You know, a train is so huge. It weighs so much. If you want to change direction or, you know, you want to bring it to a stop, well, you, it, it's a huge endeavor. You can't just, you know, spin on a dime or whatever. And that's kind of the problem when you have these massive systems in place. I think there are over 7,000 employees, the largest employer in Mobile County. Uh, I mean, it, it's a big deal. So with that, I think we have a problem sometimes with, you know, getting funding where it needs to go. And, um, you know, some of the school ratings are not as high as you're going to see in other areas. but uh, there's some things that are changing. Uh, my wife's been a teacher for over 20 years. She absolutely loves it. And um, so I would say that the school system is on the rise. Uh, there are good things that are happening. Um, so if you read about things and the ratings are not as high as you would like to see, just know that they are on the rise because these teachers are incredible. I've seen it firsthand. They pour their heart and soul into these students. So that is definitely a good thing that's on the rise. Now, another thing that we have... Well, here's the deal. There's a lack of local support for anything new. In fact, whenever we share on social media, and I'll say, oh, a new restaurant's coming to town, lo and behold, there's always somebody that's going to say, oh, it'll be gone in six months, you know, or, well, the people won't support it. And the reason why is because most people in Mobile, they're kind of like myself. They're creatures of habit, and they know what they like. Uh, I've talked about Fusakli's a lot, Fusakli's Chicken Fingers. Well, that place is always booming. And if you notice, there are places that will start to you know, pop up. Hey, we've got new chicken fingers. I'll tell you, it's going to be tough to support something new because people in Mobile, um, they're very loyal. Um, and, and so one of my favorite chicken finger places in all of Mobile was a place called PDQ. And when it came in town, I loved it. I went there all the time. But Mobile just wouldn't support it. So it closed down eventually. And I hated that. But I will tell you, I think that attitude is starting to change, and people are willing to try it. And so whenever a place does open, I'll read on social media, people are saying, hey, guys, let's give this place a shot. 
you know, let's support local. Let's do this. And so a good example of that is Yellowhammer Coffee. Got my trusty mug here. Love Yellowhammer Coffee. And the thing about it is it was new. And it started, had one location, then two, then three, and that place has grown. So uh, there is a lot of hope for new things coming in town and people supporting it. But if you're considering moving here, you have to be part of the solution. So when you come out of town, you have to be able to go to these new places, support it, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt. And that's what I'm hoping and that's what I'm seeing happen more and more and more. Now, another thing is, and this is a big one, I would say this is like the biggest one of all, and it is the Bayway um, or the Causeway or the tunnel traffic. I absolutely hate it. So a lot of folks, they reach out to me and they'll ask me, they'll say, well, Jeff, you know, we know you work in Mobile, but do you also uh, work on the Eastern Shore? Of course, that's Spanish Fort, Daphne, Fairhope. And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Um, I help a lot of clients on the Eastern Shore. Um, But in order to do that, you have to leave Mobile. You have to go through the tunnel. And of course, you know, the tunnel's not very long. I don't know, 30 seconds or so. You go through the tunnel and then you come out and then you have to go from um, the west side of the bay to the east side. And it's, uh, I don't know, seven or eight mile bridge. And a lot of times it gets backed up. And the reason why is there are a lot of people who work in Mobile, who live on the eastern shore, or vice versa. People who work on the eastern shore um, and live in Mobile. So that's a very, very busy uh, interstate. And then it all has to come down as you're driving, uh, you know, from Mississippi, then into Mobile, and it all comes down to this two-lane road that goes through um, the tunnel. And so when you think about that, I mean, I-10 is the main, the main, um, I guess, road from California all the way to Jacksonville. So all that traffic has to go down through that little tunnel. So with that said, there are um, a lot of plans in place to have a $2.7 billion, that's right, billion, $2.7 billion project of building the new bridge. It's in the works. It's like one hurdle after another keeps getting crossed over, crossed over, so we're getting very close to making that happen. But when that happens, it's going to change everything. And so, you know, that's it. That's really all the things that I could think of that I hate about Mobile, but everything that I've said I hate, there seems to be um, changes that are in place to where those things will be resolved very soon. And you know, a lot of people would say I'm biased because I've lived here my whole life. And that's true. I am biased. I absolutely love it. But one thing I also love is when people reach out to me. You know, I put my number on the screen and email and all that. And the reason I do that is because I want you to reach out to me. I like answering questions. And if you need help in the transition, making the big move to Mobile, call the number on the screen. But don't forget, I've also got an incredible website that will answer a lot of your questions. And it's livinginmobile.com. And with that said, don't forget to like and subscribe because each week we're dropping a brand new video about this incredible place that I call home where I've lived here my whole life. I can't wait to hear from you, but find me on all the other channels. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even LinkedIn. You can find me on there. I absolutely love it, and I cannot wait to hear from you, and I cannot wait for the next video.